Good evening. I'm Doris Poole and this is the weekend news here on CNC3. Thank you so much for joining us. Top of the news tonight, residents of Hub Place, Port of Spain, have installed barriers at entrances to the HDC housing development after five men were gunned down and three others were injured in a brazen attack. On Saturday, gunmen with high-powered weapons drove into the apartment complex and sprayed bullets at individuals gathered outside. 24 hours later, the distraught residents have taken their safety into their own hands since they do not have faith in police. Carissa Lee and cameraman Gary Vincent visited visited the area and bring us this report. Still reeling from Saturday's tragedy, residents of Hard Place, Port of Spain are doing whatever they can to feel a sense of safety again. They told the CNC3 News that they put up makeshift barriers at every entrance, mainly to protect the children, who they do not want to face the same fate as Police Sergeant Larry Phillip, Rudolf James, Pete Noray, Devon Jack and Randy Graves all victims of Saturday's massacre. Minister of National Security Fitzgerald Hines posted on Facebook that this trajectory of violence seemed non-ending in a community that's doing well. Hines said police have indicated that it's a result of gang activity. He also said the police have had only limited success in eradicating the gangs. Meanwhile, Police Commissioner Ola Herewood Christopher said they are determined to find the perpetrators. We have deployed a coordinated multi-agency approach and are hopeful in making a breakthrough. Minister of Housing and Urban Development Camille robinson Regis strongly rebuked Saturday's murders and said no residents should feel unsafe or held ransom in their own homes. Carissa Lee, CNC3 News. Well, following yesterday's deadly mass shooting in the capital, the Prime Minister sought to assure the public that state agencies will not give up the fight to rid the nation of the evil gun culture that is now widespread in TNT. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said the killings brings home the death of the problem that the government is grappling with, and the ever-increasing want and disregard for human life is to be condemned in the soundest of ways. The Prime Minister sought to draw a link with the access and frequent use of assault weapons here and its role in the increasing brutality of the murders that have been taking place. Despite that, the Prime Minister is giving the nation the assurance that the state is working to both identify and extract these weapons and their operators. However, political analyst Shane Mohammed says the Prime Minister needs to prove this with action instead of words society would need answered. One, what are you going to do about it? Why are you going to do what you're going to do? How are you are going to do it? And when? There's no need for details to these answers, because in this instance, actions simply speak louder than words. Opposition MP Rushton Parry agrees, saying Dr. Rowley's Facebook post offer little solace to a nation grappling with escalating crime. Paris says, why the country finds itself besieged by lawlessness, the Prime Minister offers rhetoric that provides little more than hollow condolences and platitudes. The MP also says, despite the government's significant investments in national security, the country remains perilously exposed to the predations of armed criminal elements. Rondor Daulat, CNC3 News. President of the Prison Officers Association, Gerard Gordon, is questioning just how much those in authority value their safety, months after prison officer Kendall Smith was shot dead in Arima. Speaking at the annual conference of delegates at Cipriani Labor College on Saturday, Gordon raised the concern as every office his association has requested a meeting with has ignored them. He says this includes a request to meet with the National Security Minister, prison and police commissioners to discuss their poor working conditions. This as he laments that prison officers continue to be targeted by criminals. Safety and security of our officers continue to be a very major issue. Very early in our term we would have written for a meeting with the Commissioner of Police. Um, to date, notwithstanding her replies of as she gets time, she will meet us meet with us, to date we have not met. 
Responding to the comment, Prisons Commissioner Diopasad Ramuta says the tone of the association's letter makes it unlikely that they would be met with a favorable response. <laughs> Imagine still waiting to build your dream home on land you purchased as much as 20 years ago? Well, that's the continued nightmare group of families are living. Desperate and unsure where to turn next, they turned to CNC3 News to investigate. Here's the story about a Santa Cruz development under development for two decades. A house on the hill with a picture-perfect panoramic view is the dream home of many. So when house hunting families were offered 8,000 square feet of land in Santa Cruz, at a good price, it was hard to refuse. The proposed development is owned by Policy Consultants Limited. Its director is former Works Minister and recent temporary UNC Senator Dr. Carson Charles. Ten years ago, a group of families paid upwards of $200,000 each for a parcel of land here at this 3.4 hectare development at Sambuco Extension in Santa Cruz. All this time later, and as you can see, not a single room has been built and the development is yet to be completed. These families are left in limbo. They're wondering where is their money and what is going to become of their dream homes. The families were promised that all will be sorted within a year of purchase, allowing them to build. Policy Consultants Limited was responsible for developing the land and obtaining approvals. Randy, whose name was changed, paid $300,000 in cash for a lot in 2004. I did ask him when I signed the agreement how long it was going to take, and he said he needed to get the water and sewage and electricity parts of it done, and also town and country. I told him I was starting a family. I had two little kids, and that's where my funds were going, to a mortgage. Since then, I've been constantly given a runaround, asking for information and only been told that it is being finalized. It is almost there. Every time I ask for an audience with Dr. Charles, I've always been told that he is busy. So I have practically been given a runaround for the last 20 years now. He hopes to sell the land to finance university tuition for his daughters. He says the company asked him to find other clients and having done so, he's been left embarrassed. Another client, Helen, paid in full for her lot in 2008. I would not have purchased Kattenberg from anybody, but because of his name and him being a politician at the time, I thought that we would not get a runaround. I was pregnant at the time, so I thought I would see my son riding in the area and everything like that. I got my deed because I paid for my land. I took the option to make one payment. However, I couldn't do anything with it. I can't sell, I can't bill, because as you know, all the approvals are not in hand. I've been trying to sell, but it has to be a cash purchaser. They can't go to the bank for financing, because yes, I have a deed that we can sign over, but the bank asks for approvals. Helen says the company offered to sell her back the land at cost price. But she refused, as it did not cover the significant interest paid on her loan. A third client, Angela, paid close to $300,000 in total. She made her first down payment a decade ago. She's convinced she's been conned. Policy Consultants Director Dr. Carson Charles says the company is waiting for final regional corporation approval. He says the development has all approvals except drainage, as the site has to update its drainage system. I understand that on, on their side they would have had position with us because we have to wait for approval. But it's not their fault. Um, it's not, not their fault at all. So it's our responsibility. We're not trying to block our responsibility. Um, we take responsibility for that. The bank of has taken. Um, really sorry it has taken so long. The land is sold at a very reasonable price, but at least sold. I challenge anybody to get land, 8,000 square feet of land for $300,000 in fact. I challenge anybody to try to get that somewhere and tell me where to get that. The land was sold at about half price, to so only 50% of the market value, because it was undeveloped land that we had to go through the whole development process. He says every client who has asked for a refund has gotten it at cost price. Joshua Simungal, CNC3 News.
Thank you, Joshua, for that report. It's time now for a break. We'll be right back. Welcome to Hanan Low Price Industrial Tires, your destination for quality and durability on the road. Introducing our top notch tire brands, Step Rising, Grimax, and Dura. Unleash the power of Step Rising, where quality meets strength. Experience the longevity of Duran, built to withstand the test of time. Embrace the road with confidence on Remax tires, engineered for durability. Visit our showroom at South Haven Shopping Centre, David, where our wide range of tires are with. Quality is not just our promise, it's our commitment to you. What if you can't make it to us? No worries. We can bring the tire shop to your doorstep. Enjoy free delivery because your convenience matters. Your time is precious and so is your vehicle. Don't compromise safety. Remember, tires are the foundation to your journey. Say no to cheap inferior tires. Invest wisely in the longevity and performance of your vehicle. We understand that tires are more than just rubber. They are the connection between you and the road. Worried about affordability? Fear not. We offer quality prices that won't break the bank. Because we believe everyone deserves the best. Anna Low Price Tires, your trusted partner in quality, durability, and convenience. Contact us at 366-4783. Let your journey begin with tires you trust. You've set big goals for your future, and we can help you to achieve them. Getting that degree you've always wanted, buying your first car, making it official on a truly special day, or building a home that's your own. Big or small, share your ambitions with us, and we can help make them real. Ramadan Kareem from Southern Food Basket. Get goat stew $22.95 per pound, beef stew five pounds for $99, Rabi dates 500 gram $24.95, Sultanas $8.95 per pound, extra large chana two pounds for $18.95, split peas five pounds for $17.95, cocoa two liter three for $24.95, blue waters 410 ml five cases for $100, Mabel's ketchup 750 ml three for $22.95, Smart Buy paper towels four for $17. Get the best for less at Southern Food Basket this Ramadan. Visit us at Coffee Street San Fernando, SS Erin Road Pinal, St. Charles Village, Princess Town, Southern Main Road Point 14. Available at Ferrero Optical. I'm here with John Walsh. You guys may know him from America's Most Wanted. So, John, tell me, how has the addition of Omega XL to your daily routine affected your overall lifestyle? Incredibly. I was very skeptical. I catch bad guys for a living. I've had two fractured skulls, two broken jaws, eight concussions, eight broken noses. So I'm always searching for something to mediate that pain. If you're living with joint or muscle pain caused by inflammation, try Omega XL and see the difference it can make in your life. We're gonna do this together. Jimmy Abood will pay your VAT until Good Friday. Take 12.5% off any item. No exceptions at our Port of Spain and Barataria locations. From now until Good Friday, Jimmy Abood pays your VAT on any purchase. Welcome back. 
Orapuch West MP Davindranath Tanku believes that at least 100,000 homeowners are facing criminal proceedings for failing to pay property tax by June, but this is being disputed by Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Brian Manning. Tanku hazarded a guess at the figure as he reminded that it is a criminal offense not to pay the tax, which is punishable by summary conviction and a $5,000 fine. Last year, Finance Minister Calm Imbert revealed that TNT has around 400,000 residential property. 232,000 of which were placed on the valuation rule by May 2023. But with just 801 people paying the tax so far, Tanker warns that many more homeowners could face the brunt of the law, even as the valuation tribunal has not yet been appointed to receive objections from those dissatisfied with the annual rental value placed on their homes. Those persons are likely to be subjected because right now the law gives the minister the approval and provision to legally prosecute those persons for failure to comply. And I believe, given this minister's clandestine characteristics, that he will so do. Also urged Ember to disclose who was responsible for placing notices on the door of Board and Inland Revenue buildings after the suspension of payments for property tax on March 14th, following the, his denial that he gave the instruction to do so. If he cannot say it publicly, then he should not be saying it at all. And I challenge him to stop hiding behind X. Stop hiding behind the use of Twitter. Get involved now. Provide the information now. If your name man, come public. However, Manning is refuting concerns about penalties for failing to pay property tax, calling Tanko confused. He reminded that the matter is heading to Parliament tomorrow for debate and notes that the extension gives the Valuation Division more time to review queries and allow the Finance Minister to extend applicable time periods under the Act. Now, following public outcry over the property tax, Finance Minister Calm Imbridge announced last week that the residential property tax will be reduced from 3% to 2%. Property owners also have more time to lodge objections to their tax notices. Based on this announcement, we asked whether you are satisfied with a reduction in property tax. Here's what some of you had to say. Yes, I'm satisfied. Well, it gives everybody the chance now to, to pay it because they didn't expect it in the past. It's something that's introduced right now to people. So they deserve to get the chance to pay it at a, a good rate and then they will go up as the years go by. Yeah, I satisfy. Um, all over the world, we're paying property tax and taxes help run the country. And um, if we don't, well, if the country don't make any revenue, who will support the government workers and stuff? Yes, I am. Well, it, it helps a lot with the people, the poor people, of course, who owns a, a property now. Of course I am not. That is not satisfying at all. Because you see, things very stiff in the country right now, you know? People not having jobs since after the COVID. Yeah. Well, it's 1% less, so yeah, better than nothing. That didn't make no sense. So why the judge didn't take away the 3%? Interesting views there. The Ministry of Works and Transport has installed above-ground traffic monitoring systems at eight intersections to help with traffic congestion. Speaking at the site of one of the monitoring systems at the intersection between the BWIA Boulevard and Golden Grove Road today, Minister Rohan Sinanan explained that these detectors, which cost $200,000 each, will control the traffic lights based on the flow of traffic. He says before they had underground detectors, but they weren't effective as both the detectors and the lines had been damaged by heavy traffic or roadworks. What you had happening there, sometimes in a flow of tra uh, traffic, there's no traffic actually flowing, but the light is on, um, on red. Mm -hmm. and, and that keeps back the other um, signal. So when you monitor it from above ground here, you would be able to manage the traffic. So if there's no traffic going from east to west, then there's no point in, in, in stopping the traffic going from north to south. So this helps us to do that. 
Sinanan says the plan is to roll out 14 of these detectors soon and more where necessary across the country. Right now we're working on 60 sites in Trinidad where we could have that, um, that coordination with all these lights so that we can monitor it from one center, which is the traffic um, enforcement center at uh, Kearney, where we have an entire floor designated to uh, traffic management. Sinanan explained that this is one of three steps the ministry has planned to address this country's traffic problem. The other two steps include the continued build-out of the highway network and the upgrade of the existing network. Spiritual Shelter Baptist Liberation Day celebrations got an early start with a congregation of the Mount Zion, Mount Zion Church in Castara. The day began with an 8 a.m. walk eastward from Castara Junction along Windward Road to the Mount Zion Church. Reverend Fitzherbert Phillips reminded those gathered of their journey to Liberation Day, including when it was illegal for them to pray in public because of the shelter prohibition ordinance, which is why he says it is important for them to celebrate publicly because their forefathers had to hide their faith. Our Prime Minister at the time saw it fit because he saw the struggles. He was born in that era. He saw me hiding all under the, the bridge and running from police and all the different things that took place that we couldn't have what we have here today. In 1996, the late former Prime Minister Bas Pandey named it a public holiday to celebrate the 1951 repeal of the harmful ordinance on March 30th, its anniversary. Still to come in sport, victory for Red Force men while the women stumble against Guyana. Jimmy Abood will pay your VAT until Good Friday. Take 12.5% off any item. No exceptions at our Port of Spain and Barataria locations. From now until Good Friday, Jimmy Abood pays your VAT on any purchase. If you don't eat food as medicine now, later you will be eating medicine as food. So, what's the best remedy for a longer, healthier life during these critical times? Eating the right foods, exercising, getting enough sleep, cutting back on alcohol, and a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Try Omega XL. The only thing you have to lose is the pain. Oh! Omega XL has over 30 different fatty acids. Omega XL is not from fish. Omega XL is an all-natural omega-3 anti-inflammatory. Family fun begins at Passat's Deep Food King and Bright Onions. Dive into the thrill of our soap, slide, and skate promotion. For every $300 spent at Passat's Deep Food King and Bright Ideas, grab your entry form and get ready to make a splash at Harry's Water Park with weekly winners beginning February 10th. That's right. Get the chance to win one of 50 tickets for family or five to Harry's Water Park. Your ticket to fun is just a purchase away. Let the adventures begin. But hurry, promotion ends April 12, 2024. And it's NLCB approved. Arima Door Center, manufacturers of quality wooden panel doors, flush doors, pine doors, cedar doors, kitchen cupboard doors. Arima Door Center, located at number four Cleaver Road, Arima. Arima Door Center, made in TNT. Did the holiday spending put a dent in your cash? Well, hear what? Top up your pocket in the Cash Splash promotion. Win over $200,000, including over 65000 in our weekly draws. Well, here what to do. Grab any cold, cold, turbo energy drink, Fruta, Cool Kids, Viva, or Oasis Water. Then visit Facebook or Instagram at Cold Cold Caribbean or Fruta Fruit Juice Official for more details. Let's top up your pocket with the Cash Splash promotion. I've definitely seen a difference in my knees, the stiffness in my hips. Because it's an oil extract, I think of it like olive oil in between my joints that are loosening it up. Omega XL has really kept us feeling great. The only thing you have to lose is the pain.
Welcome back. TNT cyclist Nicholas Paul recovered from a spill on Saturday in the men's Kieran semifinals by claiming the bronze medal in the men's match sprint at the UCI Track Cycling Nations Cup in Hong Kong. The 26-year-old Gaspar Le Bon Paul swept Australian Lee Huffman in two straight rides in their best of three series to secure the bronze medal. In the final, Kaya Ota came from a ride down to capture gold against Australian Matthew Richardson, who took the silver. In the semifinals, Paul was beaten by the eventual winner in straight rides. Nonetheless, we, stay, we say congratulations to him. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force recorded their second victory of the West Indies four-day championships when they defeated the leaders, the Windward Islands Volcanoes, at the Queen's Park Oval yesterday. Kasten Cupid has the highlights in this report. Resuming on 10 runs for two on the final day, the Red Force needed to reach 186 for victory, while the Windward Island Volcanoes needed to bowl out the host at the Queen's Park Oval. Things looked pretty well for the tabletoppers when they got rid of night watchman Brian Charles in a superb fashion. Well, he's hitting it in there. That's a super catch from Springer. That is a super catch. Jason Mohammed and Jid Gouli hurried the score up before lunch with a 50-run partnership. Until Mohammed departed, he was bowled for 15. Has well, it gone on to hit bowled him? There. Yes. yes, it has. He was looking to cut a delivery well. 71 for four. But that was all the success the Windward Islands got. After the break, Gouli went on to get his half ton. He carried his tally to 90 before he retired hurt. Joshua De Silva took control and he hit a half ton himself with 53. 186 for four. A victory for the Red Force by six wickets, handing the Volcanoes their first loss of the season. Custom Cupid, CSE3 Sport. Staying with regional cricket, it was not the same success for Trinidad and Tobago's Red Force women playing in the CWI T20 Blaze in St. Kitts and Nevis. The toss was the only thing local ladies won at Warner Park Basté as they were humbled by the Guyana women. Batting first, TNT were bowled out for a small total of 66 runs in 18.3 overs. It was all thanks to an amazing bowling spell by Fafiana Millington, who took five wickets for just four runs in 3.3 overs. Batting for TNT, Chanel Sao was the top scorer with 15 runs. In reply, the Guyanese only need 11 overs to complete the mission, 67 for three. The final, a comprehensive seven-wicket win. It's time now for another break. Don't go anywhere. When you have mental health disorders, it does not discriminate. If we think that it is not going to happen to us, that's not true. Join us on Caribbean Medical as we discuss mental health and its impact. We'll chat with psychologists and social workers on how to handle stress and make the right choices to improve our health. Caribbean Medical, this Sunday at 7.30 p.m. As a former Miss World, I have spent many hours walking in high heels and constantly on the move. So I understand the importance of joint health. That's why I trust Omega XL. As you know, beauty works from the inside out. Senior attorney at law, Bert Samuels, whose team represented Sean Seanstorm Campbell before the UK-based Privy Council in the Vibes Cartel murder appeal case, has expressed his elation that the convictions have been quashed. The JCPC, in quashing the convictions for which the men were sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams, sent the matter back to Jamaica's Court of Appeal to decide whether there should be a retrial. If the lower court decides against a retrial, while the four men who have been behind bars since their arrest in 2011 will walk free. All right, now, 
It's time to go to our weather forecast for tomorrow. The Met Office says expect sunny, hazy, and at times breezy conditions to be interrupted by the occasional shower in a few areas. Tomorrow's maximum forecast temperature in Trinidad is 32 degrees, while Tobago will experience a high of 31 degrees Celsius. Seas are moderate with waves two meters in open waters and below one in sheltered areas. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us for the 7 p.m. news here on CNC3. I'm Doris Polo on behalf of myself and the rest of the team. Have a good night. You're watching CNC3.